the computer science and philosophy and law, a lot of that is luck. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So uh, I think, what, so when I was, a, the, the biggest thing that happened, I think the most formative thing that happened in my life is when I was five years old, my brother was three, my mom got terminal breast cancer. And so I saw her kind of waste away over five years. She died when I was 10. And I think, you know, there's a lot of studies that show that you lose a parent or you suffer some sort of really tragic event when you're younger. It really shapes your life. And that really shaped my life. It made me very, very curious. And of course, this is not conscious when I'm 10, 12 years old, but it made me very conscious, very thoughtful about big questions. Mm -hmm. Like when you start thinking about, <clears throat> for example, when my mother died, I started that my dad was a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. And when he went off to work, I was just praying that he would come back because if he didn't, I would be an orphan. And so when you're 10 and 12 and you start pondering these types of questions, it kind of sets you on a path. And so, and, and I didn't even realize it did that. When I was in high school, I was an athlete. I played basketball. I was an all district player. I ended up going to Texas A&M to play basketball. And that was all I cared about. I really didn't care. I made good grades, but I never had to study. It was a lot easier back then. But I show up at Texas A&M. I, I don't have a major. And these computer things, this is in the early 1990s, these personal computers were just starting to become known. And I like computers. I, it was fun to me. And so I started taking some computer classes. I really enjoyed it. And I was like, you know, maybe I'll just study computer science. And in the computer science department at Texas A&M at the time, you were required to take another major or, or another degree. Most people took math, physics, electrical engineering, stuff like that. I had taken a philosophy course or two and was absolutely enraptured by philosophy, mainly because I think it asked important questions, like big, big questions. A lot of the, a lot of the, my friends in college, all they were cared about was chasing girls and drinking beer. And I cared about that a lot too, but I also cared about these big questions. So I ended up studying computer science in college and philosophy kind of almost by accident in a way. I, I kind of just studied what I was interested in. And I tell people today, Ivan, I say it really, unless you want to be like something super specific, like some sort of doctor or something, it doesn't matter what you major in in college. It really doesn't. What, what you should do is you should chase what you're interested in. It makes everything so much easier. You'll learn way better. And that, and that's what I did. And now it turns out, Ivan, I didn't know this at the time, the original computer scientists were philosophers by and large, mm -hmm. just like the original scientists mm -hmm. were philosophers. In fact, they used to call it, there was no word for science a, a hundred years ago. They called it natural philosophy. Mm -hmm. Like I, uh, Isaac Newton considered himself a natural philosopher. And the thing that I think is so cool about philosophy is philosophy is everybody thinks physics is the fundamental science and it's not it's philosophy because philosophy is the branch of science that ask the important questions and in order to do physics or chemistry or biology or computer science or mathematics you have to know what questions to ask first right so traditionally in the scientific community it's the philosophers that kind of ask the questions and the scientists go out and try to answer those questions. So it was really kind of luck, but I'll tell you what, and then I end up going to law school. I have a funny story about how I ended up doing that, but I got so lucky in a way because I was on the cutting edge of the personal computing revolution. Plus I studied philosophy and law and all of these things now are converging. And let me tell you, let me give you a couple of examples of what I mean by that artificial intelligence. There's a ton of discussion about the ethics behind artificial intelligence. I don't know all the answers to AI, but I do know what the questions are. And I also know that people that own technology companies are not necessarily the best people to answer these questions. So if you're Elon Musk, whether whatever you think about Elon Musk, he has incentives to answer these questions in certain way, number one. Number two, as far as I know, he has no philosophical training at all. He may be a great tech person, just like Mark Zuckerberg 
or Jack Dorsey or Bill Gates. They may be great tech people, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're good at ethics and morality. It doesn't mean they're not, but it doesn't mean they are. And I think a lot of the times we assume that because these people build these te technological marvels, that they're also better at the ethics and they're not. We need we need philosophers right now more than ever. We need ethicists right now more than ever because we're about to face, in my opinion, some of the most profound existential questions we have ever faced in the history of the human race. I mean, we are literally staring aliens in the face right now in the form of artificial intelligence. We're all we're constantly talking about are we ever going to see aliens? Blah 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 blah. They're amongst us now in in many ways. Like like we're we're around things that are close to being conscious and how we deal with that, how we interact with technology, whether we whether we put guardrails around it. Those are the most important questions facing humanity. The most important questions facing humanity are not scientific questions or philosophical questions. And we need people with some training in that area. So I kind of got lucky and then I end up going to law school. And what is what is the law, Ivan? The, the law is the manifestation of a society's ethics. In other words, we think it is unethical to kill people. We think it is unethical to steal their property. And so... The law is a, is a is a real world manifestation of the society's ethics. So they're all the computer science, the law, the philosophy is it's so, all kind of connected in a way, and it's getting more and more connected. 